Hey guys, welcome to another lesson. This time I'm going to go over the options you have when it comes to co-op. And yes, you can co-op with other players, not just AI. So how can you do so? In my opinion, the best possible way is to go to the Tori Gate, in which involves different online modes. And then you've got Expeditions. Now, Expeditions allow you to set up lobbies. You can either decide to join someone else's via a quick match, which I won't do, and then you'll just be randomly matched to somebody based on the conditions that you apply here, so take your time messing around with those. Or you can specify things a bit more specifically with a custom match. So let's say I don't care about any conditions whatsoever, I just want to see what's available for me right now with how much I've progressed in the game. So you can see with my main character, I can join all of these lobbies if I would like to. But let's say I want to make a lobby for my friends and myself and just keep it restricted to us. How can I do so? Well, that's why you create your room. You can set up your conditions if you want. And let's say I want to have it just be private for my friends and then I can set it to friends or I can set a secret word. And the one I've chosen is Neo 2, which is I'm sure very original but I can decide the conditions as to which people can join my lobby and I can just create a room and wait for friends. What I can do as the host is I can choose the mission that I would like. Uh, you may notice that these regions are purple and that's just because they have uh, the twilight mission for the day. I guess uh, why... Oh, see the twilight mission of the day. That's pretty much what you can do. In terms of selection, uh, you're only going to have access to the missions that everyone can play at the same time, so it's not like you can choose somebody to be able to do endgame content at the very beginning. Unfortunately, but it makes sense. So you can pick the mission, so let's just say I picked the first mission. I can decide to change the settings if I want. Let's say I want to open up one of the guest slots so that I don't have to make use of the private slot and say, hey, I don't want to use it, or I can open it up to anybody. I can also decide to allow people to drop in while the missions are going on. So let's just say one of my friends needs to boot up his PC and he just will be there in like five minutes. So then I can just allow him to drop mid-mission. And I say, hey, um, you're on, as long as you're on my friends list, or if I had set up the secret word, I would say just use the secret word. But basically I would tell him what the private slot conditions are, and then he can just drop in easily. No big deal. Now what else can you do? You can go to the starting point, mess around with your hut. So if you need to manage your equipment or builds or just check certain things out, you can. Um, if you want to look at your shrine, so you can mess around in the shrine, go for it. There's also the blacksmith and you can tinker around her with your gear, which I know uh, you probably haven't unlocked at this point, but you will pretty shortly. So it's pretty handy to just mess around with your loadout and get prepared. And then when you're prepared, you can say, hey, I want to start the mission. Um, if I had another player in this lobby, what would happen is that there would be a countdown that begins. And then once everybody says, hey, you know what? All our preparations are complete. Let's go. And then the mission starts. Now, what is the benefit of doing this besides just a nice, easy way to organize stuff? So I'm actually going to start this alone. And then I'm going to explain a bit about what is going on because there are quite a lot of benefits to doing expeditions as opposed to the other forms of co-op which I will talk about soon enough. So there's a screen there which had some useful information. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to share it. But as you can see on the top leftish side, you'll notice a blue bar that is referred to as your assist gauge. Now, what is this assist gauge? I will unfortunately have to read some of this out to you, it's supposed to show you more easily, but basically you have a blue assist gauge, the gauge depletes every time someone dies and if it's completely gone the mission will end in failure. The only exception is if you're in a boss battle and one person is still up, it doesn't matter if the gauge depletes as long as that person is basically still alive. So you can have your, you or your friend can kind of like save the day so that's pretty good um, also if you banish an instance of the dark realm which i will explain in a future video then you can actually replenish a good portion of your gauge so it's not like you have a set maximum and there's no way you can increase it and it's just going to feel bad now when a player does die though their grave will appear on the ground and the gauge will start to empty as their partner 
you can go and revive them and you will and, and I know it says it replenishes the gauge but really what it means is you won't lose as much gauge so let's just say like if you were gonna lose let's say a hundred points um, then maybe you will only lose 20 points or something like that um, this is most evident let's say if you die you have the option of reviving yourself immediately by holding circle but by doing so you'll lose the most amount of of gauge that you could it's basically a, a fixed amount so like I was saying let's say you lose a hundred points uh, I don't know a hundred points out of what um, if you revive yourself you will always lose a hundred points but if your friend revives you, you might lose only 20 um, the amount will depend on how quickly they are able to revive you so communication is key so if you just set up like I don't know some voice chat software somewhere or you just talk to them you can really coordinate things really well now if everyone dies at the same time it's bad but you won't automatically wipe provided there's enough gauge for the first person who died to auto revive via the method I just talked about otherwise you all fail the mission which sucks continuing on with that when you pray at a shrine enemies that you have taken out don't actually respawn so you don't need to worry about that however to compensate there are more enemies in an expedition just because you know you're gonna have two three players playing at the same time so bear that in mind. Also, when you do pray at a shrine for the first time, everyone gets their health restored and whatever jutsu items, which I know I haven't covered and I won't in this video, but in a later one. But your jutsu items come back and if you visit the same shrine, players can't change their jutsu setup just to prevent exploits. Now one other thing, let's say you do end up failing, which sucks. And let's say it's at the boss all right he has like five percent health left and then you fail that feels really bad and you're like dude do i gotta start the whole thing over again fortunately the answer is no you can actually continue now you won't be able to pick up at that five percent of that boss's hp but you'll go back to the most recent shrine so if there's certain bosses that have a shrine right outside their boss room well great you just go to that shrine reattempt the boss fight and you're good to go the only downsides will be that the max capacity will decrease it's about i think it's like half so let's say you only had like 10 percent of your gauge in the first place well now you'll go up to 50 percent, so it's kind of an upgrade so that can be pretty cool um, you will unfortunately lose stuff you've acquired such as Amrita or unpurified soul cores and I'll talk about soul cores in a different video. But still, you don't lose all progress unless the host chooses to do so. If they say, hey, I don't want to continue and end the mission, well then you guys have to start from scratch. So, you know, maybe you need to throw in the towel for whatever reason. But, hey, you've got that option. So expeditions are, in my opinion, the best way to play with other players. But there are other methods which I am going to show you now. Um, before I get to that, oh cool, sacred salt. I'll talk about that a bit later. Um, let's just show you what it looks like when you either complete or fail a mission. In my case, I'm failing a mission because I haven't, I haven't done anything. So what is it gonna look like? You're gonna have this card, it might say expedition success, and you get a bunch of like different rewards. Sometimes you get some special stuff, and this can be used to all sorts of great effects, which I will have to touch in a later video. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I can decide to continue an expedition if I want to keep going with friends I can also leave if you're the host you disconnect everybody and it's a really great way to play with other players but there is another way to co-op with other people albeit in a less ideal manner and in a definitely a less organized capacity so you can just co-op with random people you can narrow down the list so you can visit specific people if you set certain conditions so you can say hey i only want to visit friends and then you know you just search for a friend and then bam you just join their game it's that easy but let's explain how we can have the situation flipped all right so let's just i'm going to go into some arbitrary mission no not that one go with this one so let's say you want someone to visit you. How do you do that? And why would you want to do that? So first thing, if you want someone to visit your mission, and how do you do this? So it's pretty simple. All you got to do is you go on over to summon visitor. Cool. And what you can do is you can change the settings so you can have only specific people visit you whether that be friends or you don't have any conditions whatsoever 
or it, they are locked with a secret word. So I'm just going to say, hey, you know what? I can only have my friends join. And then you can offer Ochoco Cups. This is the currency you will need in order to summon visitors. You can summon up to other players. So I invoked, I can invoke up to two people. And now what I can do is I can actually leave the shrine. And I can just play freely and if they can join, they'll join. And nothing will change about the level. So no more extra enemies. Uh, the HP of enemies or anything like that doesn't change. And that can be pretty rad. The downside is though, if the visitor or the host dies, you have to re-invoke them all over again using an invoke, using the Ochoco Cup. Um, one of the best uses, in my opinion, of this is to, like, let's just say you're at a boss and you just need help really quick and you don't want to go through the hassle of the expedition, well then just invoke somebody real quick and then just get them to kill the boss with you really quickly and then just move on. So it's really nice, but of course, lower investment, lower potential i mean you're going to have greater risks with it and but yeah it's quite valuable and let's say i have a visitor that i don't want or i don't want to deal with visitors then you can use sacred salt as you can see an item used in a simple ceremony to send visitors back once you are done with them if you have more than one you can select which one you wish to send back so let's say someone's kind of ruining your game for whatever reason well you can be like hey here's my sacred salt and goodbye so it's pretty nice you've got a lot of control with it and it's pretty rad. Also, if you want to change things pertaining to the invoking right away, we'll just go back to summon visitor and then I can withdraw an Ochoco cup. And I can withdraw it again and I get my cups back. And so that's pretty handy. Very valuable. Let's say I don't want to play with players altogether. Let's say I want to play with AI. Well, let me see if I can show you a good spot. I'm going to kill some enemies real quick. They literally should die in like two seconds because I am grossly overleveled for where I'm at right now. Bye. No, you're not going to see your family. No, I don't care. You had you were going to pay off the mortgage. OK, <laughs> that was needlessly cruel. OK, so now that I've cleared this, I can explain this a little better. So you see these blue graves, right? This is called a benevolent grave. What you can do with benevolent graves is, well, they're just AI that control player revenants. So a player dropped this so that you could use them to assist you. And so now you've got a little AI partner and it can be pretty handy. In order to use them, you need Ochoco cups, as you can see there. Uh, the cost for them can vary depending on the situation. There are developer benevolent graves and they can be used for special effects in terms of like missions and whatnot. So there's a lot of cool little Easter eggs you can figure out if you just mess around with the developer stuff. But yeah, you can get them to help you, which is great. And then you may have seen the, oh yeah, before I get to the red ones, you see this green one? This is actually one I dropped. So how can I drop a benevolent grave so I can assist people. So I can just drop it with the righteous Jasper. All right, but I just use. And the question you may have is, well, why would you want to do that? Well, if people use your benevolent grave, then you get, get stuff in return and get a bunch of different items back in your hut. So there's definitely an incentive to helping other players aside from being really nice. Um, there's also, last but not least, the bloody grave now what is the bloody grave for as you can see here i can fight a revenant and why would you want to fight them well you can get loot from them if they're in the dark realm you can even get the soul cores they have equipped which is really good and i will use this at some point in a later video to explain how to trade with other players but if you're not looking to trade and you just want to get their loot regardless of whose it is and then you just fight them kill them and you can get their loot and then you can also sometimes get some very valuable information about how they died so maybe there's like a trap up ahead or there's something that you may not have expected so it can be pretty handy so let's say i want to kill this guy let's go just die okay great so he's dead and as you can see i can get a bunch of loot i guess i'm a choco cups and stuff like that and i don't care for that cannon so i'm gonna leave that alone but yeah 
good reasons for you to get their loot and just work with a lot of these fun little systems in the game. And let me just show you what summoning a benevolent grave is like. Cool, thanks for the gesture. And you know they can just assist you as you go try to slaughter things in the game. So a lot of different options for co-op and I definitely hope you take advantage of them. But that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope this video was helpful and I will see you guys in the next lesson.